So it's not very often that I actually receive information about a reading before hitting the record button, but today is one of those rare times because before I even hit record, I clearly heard this is the opportunity of a lifetime and they are deciding whether or not they're going to take it. It's kind of a funny energy because whoever is coming through here, first of all, I'm getting very heavy masculine energy from this person coming through. So I feel I'll be speaking to a group of divine feminines here. This masculine is coming off somewhat like a flaky energy or a little bit of a player energy, or that's at least how they appear on the surface. The strange thing about this masculine is that deep down, they actually believe that something about a divine feminine here is very different. That word different is coming out strongly. So the divine masculine here ironically sees a divine feminine as being very unique, being very different, being someone highly worth pursuing and investing their time in. I literally keep hearing like connecting with you divine feminine feels to this person like the opportunity of a lifetime and yet they're in this strange kind of limbo energy like are they going to seize the opportunity or are they going to let it pass them by now even as i said that i could sense that this masculine knows if they do pass up this opportunity they're going to be in deep regret i am already picking that up right away but let's turn to the traditional tarot and see what comes up. Now, do keep in mind, I channel many different people, situations, and messages throughout these readings, so always only take what connects with you personally. If you would like me to channel more specifically for you and your situation, I also recommend subscribing to the channel and liking the video as this does allow me to pick up more easily on your energy. Okay, so what is going on with this very strange, almost player-like masculine energy, but that word player doesn't really describe the full picture of their energy because deep down they have very genuine feelings. I almost feel like something may have happened with this person's mother or in their family with their father that caused them to not want to get close to anyone. This may have been someone who even was made fun of in school or something like that. They have this energy of overcompensation, like they're overcompensating for something here because they're afraid of losing control of themselves emotionally. With the king of wands upright, this is someone who's so independent, it's almost to a fault. Like they are so hyper independent that they actually sometimes have a difficult time forging meaningful connections with other people around them. But again, this may all be a coping mechanism. Even that hyper independence in this masculine may be a coping mechanism because of an inner child wound from their childhood where they felt misunderstood they felt abandoned or rejected in some sense something about you as well has triggered that wound because they value you so highly that they are especially afraid of that perceived potential rejection in this particular case which i know is so ironic there is that very strange energy dynamic coming up of them valuing you and your energy so highly that they're afraid to approach you because they're afraid of the perceived possible rejection of getting too close to you or caring too much. But I'm hearing them say at one level, it's already too late because even if they try to deny it to themselves, they already are in deep emotionally with you. Now, the number 13 may be significant to someone. We also have the death card speaking to a spiritual transformation. This person is very much at a breaking point in their life. 
Now, this could be a a rock bottom for them personally, professionally, in relationships, but this also could simply be that everything in their life right now feels in flux. There is a major change happening either in this person's actual life or a major change happening emotionally and spiritually. I'm feeling like there are a lot of endings, whether it's relationship endings, maybe this person, I get the sense they may have lost something recently, whether it was losing a romantic relationship, losing a job, they've lost a sense of stability and there's been a lot of upheaval in their life without really much to hold on to. But with the devil card, this person feels that the two of you are bonded in together because what's really standing out on this card is how these two people are chained together. They feel bonded to you in a way that feels deeply familiar as well. When this masculine is around you, Divine Feminine, they almost feel like it's that same feeling of when you're going through a scrapbook, looking at old pictures of yourself, where there's almost a bittersweet feeling about it. And this is because of the past life energy in your connection. This goes a lot deeper than your physical bond in this lifetime. This strangely nostalgic energy this masculine feels around you, it causes them to feel childlike in the best kind of way, to feel like that purity and innocence and playfulness of their childhood self that they thought that they'd long left behind. But even beyond that, this person feels like you were there with them through their childhood, even if you weren't childhood friends. Even if this is someone that you just met, for some of you, this could be someone you're meeting futuristically. They feel as though you're a childhood friend because there's such a profound familiarity here. In fact, I feel one or the other of you has used that word familiar to describe the other. Like you may have said, hey, do I know you from somewhere upon just meeting? They may have told you that you just looked really familiar. There also may have been an unspoken recognition of the familiarity. So if you didn't talk about it, you were still magnetically pulled together because of this familiar energy. So of course, I always let you know if I do pick up twin flame or soulmate energy, I haven't yet picked up a specific soul bond energy, but there's absolutely a spiritual connection here. This extends into past lives. This is much deeper than just this one incarnation. I'm hearing fate. So they feel like it was fate that brought you into their life, that it was fate that the two of you met. And yet they're not sure if they're ready or if they're going to be able to take this faded opportunity. Yeah, it's almost like they're fighting with themselves here with the nine of wands upright. It's almost too much to handle is the energy I'm getting here as well. Like their emotions for you, this spiritual energy flowing between the two of you almost feels too much for this person to handle. So let's channel more into this. What else is this masculine energy feeling towards a divine feminine? The eight of cups. What did I tell you guys? This is the card of abandonment. It's like this person is perceiving you having rejected them or that you're going to reject them even if you haven't, even if they haven't shot their shot with you, even if they haven't been fully open yet about their feelings, they feel like you're going to reject them or that you're going to abandon them. They're also looking really deep within themselves right now for some reason. What is this energy of self-reflection? Wow, Knight of Cups reversed. Yeah, they're feeling this love for you and worried it's going to be unrequited. I'm hearing I've never felt anything like this. 
also wondering if it's all just an illusion, almost like too good to be true. The deeper part of them knows that this bond was faded, that you entering their life has been faded. But another part of them is questioning, how can this even be real? How can you even be real, Divine Feminine, is what I'm feeling this masculine saying. They may have even joked in these literal terms with you before, like you are like a unicorn or you are just like a fantasy. How are you real? You are this person's dream come true, and that is what is making them so nervous with the Four of Swords upright. It's almost like mentally and emotionally overwhelming to them because they've never felt this before. But here we have two of cups, partnership, a coming together. There's so much potential here for a really beautiful love connection. And I feel almost as though the two of you keep kind of tasting this potential timeline, this potential reunion timeline. But then this person's frequency gets pulled back down through these fears. What if it's just an illusion through these doubts? If you are resonating with this reading so far and you do desire to deepen your connection with this person, I would really recommend my Love Magnetism Subliminal from my app Sound and Soulful because this is really powerful for magnetizing your energy field for love, positive attention, positive interaction. It can also be used specifically with a particular person to deepen the love bond between the two of you, especially when you meditate while visualizing that person and listening to the subliminal simultaneously. It will really send a sort of telepathic signal of love to them that they may magnetically respond to in real time ways. Now, this subliminal, of course, comes from my app, Sound and Soulful, where I do have over 130 subliminals for all areas of life. If you haven't yet downloaded the app, you can do so by following the link in the pinned comment or description box. You can also search for Sound and Soulful in the app stores to download it directly from there. And when you do sign up in the app, you get a seven day free trial period that you can utilize to create your own custom private playlists. You can even loop these playlists during the day or while you sleep. And as you guys know, I've personally been using subliminals for years to manifest in essentially every area of my life. I've personally seen really powerful results from using them, so I'm really excited to share them with all of you as well, and I do look forward to hearing your feedback on how it goes trying out this love magnetism subliminal even for just a few days consistently you will very likely start to notice that you're attracting more positive energy and love into your life so again all of that information is under the video but whoa two cards flew out from the bottom of the deck and the third card now at the bottom of the deck is the High Priestess, and I immediately heard, you already know. So Divine Feminine, your intuition already knows how this person really feels for you on a deeper level. Yes, their actions may cause you to wonder a little bit or to doubt from time to time, but you know, however, you're staying on your throne. You are not acting on that knowledge is what I'm getting here. You're staying in this very regal, divine, goddess-like kind of energy, staying in your empowerment, allowing yourself to intuitively recognize how this person feels, but also acknowledging that you are worthy of forward movement, decisive action, balanced, real-time, manifested, physical love connection. And so you are, in a sense biding your time, essentially seeing whether this masculine is up to the task of connecting with your very precious, valuable energy, allowing him to 
decide whether he is going to be overcome by his fears, by his own rejection wound, or whether he is courageous and strong enough to come towards you. So will this masculine come towards divine feminine? I'm really curious of the potential outcome here. Wow, here we have Knight of Pentacles. It's almost like that pentacle the knight is holding is like some kind of an offer. I'm hearing wrapped up with a bow. So it's almost like they want to make sure that when they come forward with some kind of action, communication, that it's really been thoughtful. It's been thought out that they're not approaching you in a haphazard manner, which is why they might seem very slow moving at times as well. What else is going on in this masculine's energy? What else can I channel for the beautiful divine feminines listening here? So you're coming up divine feminine as the queen of swords. Yeah, someone who's just sitting on her throne, still in that high priestess energy, very intuitively aware of the bond here, but letting the masculine figure it out. It's almost as though you've known that there's a soul connection here intuitively, but you probably didn't say that to this person. I'm hearing biting your tongue. So you might be not necessarily communicating with words, what you're feeling, what this connection is, even though you're intuitively aware of that, because you're staying in your power, seeing where things go here. Let's pull some cards from the Energy Oracle Cards deck. What else does the Divine Feminine Listening need to know? The Throat Chakra card. Wow. Incoming communication. What communication is coming in for the Divine Feminine here? With the Crown Chakra reversed and the Thinking Man upright, I see someone saying, I pushed away this divine connection because I let my ego get in the way. Can I get more clarification? Yeah, and with the root chakra upright, someone wants to ground something here with you to make something tangible, evident, clear, manifested that's been very subconscious or very telepathic. I feel that it could be the masculine here wanting to ground in this connection, wanting to make something clear. Wow, make it clear that you hold my heart with the woman holding a heart in the upright position. Very beautiful messages coming through from this reading. I will be pulling one final card from the Rumi Oracle. But first, if my energy is resonating with you, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself. And of course, the link to download the Sound and Soulful app is in the pinned comment and description box under this video. And the final card here is Passion for Purpose. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the guidebook here. Love like life flows through the heart. Feel the thrill of the flow and say nothing. As we grow on the spiritual path, so too does our ability to serve life, to serve love, to honor humanity, and to offer a contribution that is unique to us that could only flow in this particular way through the quality of our own soul light. Every light holds its own beauty. And every light has a particular task to fulfill on the divine path of life. Each one of us has something in our hearts that means something to us. It is irrelevant whether it seems practical or a recipe for success or not. We are simply meant to be what we are, 
to serve life faithfully from a place of honoring the truth of our nature, that which we feel genuinely passionate about, and to allow for life to naturally support growth according to our genuine nature. The divine path of love asks us to become conscious of and then unlearn the play acting of attempting to be a false self so that we may learn to simply love and accept our real self. Fortunately, there is pleasure in the journey of returning to passion that can make the process of self-discovery a sweet one. We must dare to believe that we are not broken, that we are not inadequate or better off to be like some other person or some other person's view of how they think we should be. We must be bold enough not to fear our passion. As we dive deep within and explore what makes us feel alive, we must be open, curious, and non-judgmental. That may be a subtle journey at first. We may feel as though we are looking in the dark, wondering if we will ever catch a glimpse of the light of passionate meaning we hope to find. Your passion will reveal itself to you with more depth, nuance, and beauty than ever before. Be curious and open to what presents itself in the wake of the falling away. Be ready for the journey within now. So that feels like a beautiful place to close the reading. I really hope this resonated with someone out there listening. If so, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Otherwise, I am wishing you all a beautiful day and I will connect with you here again in the next video.